let's begin uh, with a um, theoretical approach and the ethical and moral basis of uh, cryptocurrency. So, um, Jorge, up to you, and I'll join you here. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, amazing introduction. Thank you, my friend, my Venezuelan friend, exactly. So, what I will talk about today, um, as you mentioned, I will, I'm not here to talk about Bitcoin as an investment vehicle. I'm not here to talk about Bitcoin as a finance tool. I'm here to talk about Bitcoin in a more practical manner for people like me, for activists. Um, what we do and the way we use Bitcoin, for example, in my organization, is as a tool for civil resistance. We believe that Bitcoin is a tool to fight authoritarian regimes. Bitcoin has become a vehicle for us to do activism uh, in many places. Uh, so this is what I will talk to you about today. Uh, because for millions of people in the world, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are not a privilege. Uh, they are a necessity. So basically, the way this journey with Bitcoin began is that um, when we came together, everybody at Alumni for Liberty, we start exchanging information about the things that we needed. We have people from all authoritarian countries. We have people from countries like Venezuela, but also for, from countries like Iran, like Cuba, like Zimbabwe, like Uganda. So when we come together and we do our events and we do our meetings, we start talking about the things that we believe all need uh, to make democratic transitions uh, in our countries. So we start talking about the things that we need. So we start talking about the, for example, communication trainings that we need, or the activist grassroots movements that we need to create. And suddenly, I start hearing things from all these different people. I start hearing the word Bitcoin, the word financial freedom. And this was really interesting to me. Uh, because you see, when you are in countries like Venezuela, when you have hyperinflation, and when you have such astonishing levels of financial repression, then Bitcoin becomes the most important tool to do activism. Because in a country like Venezuela, the only thing, the only way to do activism is through Bitcoin. Because imagine if you are an activist and you have a bank account and all the banking system is controlled or monitored by the regime, then it is impossible to, for instance, operate in a country like Venezuela. So the same stories I start hearing from people from Africa, the same stories I start hearing from people in the Middle East, not even purely authoritarian countries, but also countries like Lebanon, countries like Turkey, countries like Nigeria, in which it is impossible to have a bank account and to safely do activism. So just to give you a few examples right now, all our operations in Africa, in the whole continent, uh, the hundreds of events that we do, we do it through Bitcoin. We finance through Bitcoin. We have members of staff that we pay through Bitcoin. My assistant is from Nigeria. I pay her through Bitcoin because there is no other ways uh, that we can do this. So this is why I believe Bitcoin is a really important tool in the fight for a freer uh, future in our countries. So that's one thing. The second thing, or the second way that we need to see Bitcoin is a way for civilians to also escape the astonishing levels of financial repression that our countries have. Uh, in countries like mine, you cannot save in domestic currency. You cannot save in Bolivars, because otherwise all your money will be gone. So basically, the only way that people can save is either if you have a bank account in the US or in Europe, but how many people have actually had the chance to go to Europe or to go to the US and open bank accounts? It's an extremely difficult, lengthy, and costly process. So many people, that the only way that they can save money, the few money that they can save from their salaries, is by creating wallets. And through Bitcoin, they're able to do so. So that's one example about people from authoritarian regimes. But what about people in Europe? What about people in the US? There are not many people know that activists from authoritarian countries, even when they move to the European Union, it is extremely difficult for them to open bank accounts. They get the platform. Why? Because when they go to a regular bank, either they don't have the legal status still set, but even if they do, imagine if you go and you try to open a bank account, and then the compliance teams or the financial institutions see 
millions or hundreds of disinformation campaigns about you as an activist. Every activist that comes from Venezuela or every activist that comes from an authoritarian country is always called as a terrorist or as a person against the homeland. So for a, a compliance team of a bank, when they see that, they reject the application from people who want to open bank accounts in the EU uh, in euros. So for many people, for many activists that live in Europe, Bitcoin essentially becomes their bank of last resort. Without Bitcoin, they will not be able to have funds. And that's the reality. Uh, and for instance, something that we are working on right now uh, in the European Union, uh, we are working directly to pass a resolution. Uh, because currently, what the European Union wants to do is that they want to include Bitcoin users uh, among the people with high probability of money laundering and financing of terrorism activity. Something that they call the AML, AML regulation. So something that we are doing is that we are going and we are giving the testimonies and we are testifying in the parliament and we are trying to pass a resolution so that activists that use Bitcoin at the European Union, at the European uh, region, are not treated as people with high chance of money laundering activity. Because when that happens, then these people will get uh, really in trouble. People that are just activists and just want to have banking and platform and financial ways to do stuff. So that's the, only, that's the only way to see Bitcoin. The third way to see Bitcoin is a way of also countries that are right now trapped in what I believe is financial neocolonialism. You have all these countries, 15 countries in Africa, that are still using uh, the France banking system in unjust ways. Countries that are extremely exploited by the financial system was, that was created by France um, 60 or 70 or 80 years ago uh, in the, when the fall of traditional colonialism. Countries as poor as Burkina Faso, all of them authoritarian countries for a reason. So for many people in these countries, the way to really overcome this, what I call financial neocolonialism, is through Bitcoin. There is no other way. So those are the practical elements that I want you to bring that basically say that Bitcoin is not a privilege. In the developed countries, people see Bitcoin as a privilege. When I talk to policymakers, they see Bitcoin users as people who are outside the law, for no reason whatsoever, maybe because they are hiding something. I don't believe that. I believe Bitcoin users uh, is a necessity for them. And the last thing that I want to say is that I really believe it is an essential component of a freedom society to have freedom in your financial systems. We are going uh, to, a, to a world in which there is no cash. We are going to a world in which your data is collected every single day in everything you do, and you are going to a world in which finance and banks have too much power. I believe in that. So what we need to encourage is a world in which people have financial freedom and financial decisions. It is an essential key to have a freedom society, a society in which people value their privacy, their options, in which people have the option that if they don't like the domestic currency, they can have Bitcoin. That's what I defend Bitcoin. I'm not an expert on it, I'm not an expert as you, but I have seen the practicality of it. Uh, and that's why I'm here, and that's what we do in organizations, and that's why Bitcoin is so important for the fight for freedom uh, in countries like Venezuela. Thank you very much.